And without any further ado, I would like to give the floor to Minister Karliczek. Frau Ministerin, Sie haben das Wort. You have the floor. Yes, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here together with my colleague Maria Gabriel, our EU Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Education, Education, Culture and Youth. And we're here to present the outcome of the formal meeting of the EU Ministers for Research. Maria, thank you very much once again for being at this press conference with me. What was the focal point of today's meeting? Horizon Europe, the upcoming EU framework programme for research and innovation. And the legislative package for Horizon Europe has two components in it. On the one hand, the regulation, and then on the other hand, the specific programme. Both of those texts were dealt with together by us. And I just want to call to mind briefly that the Commission, we're going back about two years now, it came up with its proposal for the next multiannual financial framework and the upcoming sector-specific EU programmes, including Horizon Europe. Then we had the Austrian presidency, Romanian, Finnish and Croatian presidencies following on from that, and a lot of very important agreements were reached under those presidencies on Horizon Europe on the 21st of July, and that was something which we all followed with bated breath. The heads of state and government agreed on the multiannual financial framework, and today it was time for us to continue the negotiations on this important programme in Council and reach a conclusion in order to quickly move ahead with the final discussions with the European Parliament. Our goal is still to reach agreement with the European Parliament by the end of the German presidency of the EU so that we can get out of the starting blocks quickly with Horizon Europe at the start of 2020. And I'm delighted to be able to inform you that today in the Council we agreed on a joint position on the entire text of the legislative package for Horizon Europe. And in particular, as part of that, we have, first of all, the provisions on synergies with other EU programmes, a very important point. Secondly, provisions on financing from the EU recovery instrument, Next Generation EU. And thirdly, the internal budgetary breakdown under Horizon Europe, and then in fourth place, the provisions on international cooperation and association of third states. So we have that agreement in Council, and that will enable us to move quickly forwards now to the negotiations with the European Parliament and the Commission and finalise those. Our scientists, our research institutes, our higher education institutes, our businesses, the citizens of Europe, are expecting the European Union to press ahead with that. Today in our Council we looked at two points of detail in particular. First of all, the internal budget within Horizon Europe, and then secondly, international cooperation and involvement of third countries. Now, on the budget distribution, a majority, a large majority of the member states, I think we can say, agreed in principle on a proportionate distribution of the budget across the individual programme areas. This is often described as the haircut variant. One small exemption to that approach, we agreed to enhance the amount available for the Marie Curie Svodovska programme in Pillar 1 by 200 million euro. And that would be offset by a corresponding reduction in the budget for the European Innovation Council in Pillar 3. Moving on then now to international cooperation and association of third countries. We talked at greater length on specific issues the conditions according to which third countries can associate themselves with Horizon Europe and also how the member states should enter into the negotiation process for those association agreements and how they can be involved more in that. We also talked about provisions that will guarantee a good balance between openness of the programme on the one hand and the need for protection of strategic European interests on the other hand. As part of that, we have a new safeguard clause which talks about 
it justified exceptions where there can be exemption, exclusion or reduction of involvement so that we don't necessarily have direct involvement or association of those third countries. And I think that with the decisions that we've reached today, this is a very important milestone which will make sure that Horizon Europe starts on time in the new year. It is my opinion that this is a decisive contribution that we have made today to make sure that we have a resilient, competitive and sovereign and, at the end of the day, sustainable Europe. I look forward now to hearing the views of my colleagues.